Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.0 and Eagle Dynamics F-16C Viper Module. Welcome to Tutorial 4, Air-to-Air -air Missiles with Radar Queuing. Today we're going to look at the two types of air-to-air -air missile which the F-16 can carry, both of which are actually on the aircraft right now. Uh, we have the AIM 120C-5 AMRAM, uh, standing for Advanced Medium Range Air to Air Missile. Uh, this is a, a FOX 3, an active radar homing missile. Uh, effective, well, maximum effective range, something in the region of 40 nautical miles. Uh, it's launched initially in semi active mode, so basically being guided by your aircraft's radar via data link. And then when it gets a bit closer to its target, it engages its own smaller radar in the nose of the missile. And at that stage, the missile is uh, fire and forget, basically. You can then break your lock and, and uh, you know, maneuver off target. Uh, so that's the, the longest range missile the F-16 can carry. We're also carrying... Uh, oh, and sorry, just to note, uh, on the wingtips and on the outer pylons, that's where we have the AMRAMs today. Uh, and then you'll see on the middle pylons, we have the AIM-9X Sidewinder missile. This is a short-range, infrared-guided missile. Uh, theoretical maximum range is 22 nautical miles. Uh, this is a FOX-2 infrared-guided, as I said. It's immediately... Uh, fire and forget off the rail because it uses its own infrared sensor to track on target although you can cue it using the radar which is what I'm going to demonstrate today. It also that maximum range of 22 nautical miles for this version a little bit nonsensical um, you know because this is a short range missile you're going to generally be you know high G low speed high angle of attack kind of position when you launch this so achieving that kind of range is almost impossible really in uh, realistic conditions. Uh, I would normally say that you know between 8 and 10 miles you're doing pretty good with a Sidewinder. Uh, this version though is heavily upgraded from earlier Sidewinders. It has a 90 degree high off bore sight capability. That means that its sensor has a really wide field of view uh, and in combination with the helmet mounted sight you can actually launch this missile up to 90 degrees off the nose of your aircraft which is pretty impressive. Uh, we're not going to be using the helmet mounted sight today, that's for another tutorial, uh, so we will be restricted by the field of view of the radar. Uh, however, it's quite an impressive capability. This missile also has thrust vectoring controls, and so the moment it comes off the rail, it can execute extreme turns while still under power, which uh, again makes it very, very good for off bore sight shots. So, uh, today we're going to be first carrying out a single target attack with the AMRAM. Uh, we will then carry out a multiple target attack with the AMRAM uh, using TWS and bugged targets like I demonstrated in the previous video. And then lastly, we'll demonstrate the AIM-9X Sidewinder in its radar queued mode. And this is how you get the most range out of it, really. Um, but uh, you're probably going to be using it in a dogfight most of the time. So, uh, if you rejoin me in a moment, we'll be in the cockpit and I will take you through the setup. Okay, you join me back in the cockpit of the F-16C, and now let's get the aircraft set up to do our first engagement. So, uh, first we're going to press air-to-air -air master mode, and that will by default give us the sidewinder. Let's push and hold nose wheel steering long, and that's how we can switch to the other missile type. So that's us with the AIM-120C. Long press again gives us a sidewinder. The other way of changing is to go to the right MFD, which in air-to-air -air mode will default to the store's management system, and we can press this push button here to flip between AIM-120C and the AIM-9X. So uh, let's go over the store's management page quickly first. Uh, we have the mode here. We're currently in air-to-air -air missile mode. If I press that, we can switch it to guns. If I press it again, we're back in air-to-air -air missile. Inventory is accessible from here, and this will confirm the inventory of what's attached to the aircraft. So, on the inner pile, well, we've got nothing on the center. We have fuel tanks on the inner pylons, AIM 9Xs on the middle pylons, AIM 120Cs on the outer pylons, and AIM 120Cs on the wingtips. If I press inventory again, it will take me back to the SMS. We then have the mode in which we're going to employ the AIM 120. It can be fired in slave or bore sight mode. We're going to use slave mode today. Slave mode means that the missile will be queued to a target provided to it by the radar. 
in boresight mode, the missile will use its own radar seeker only, and that can be used to allow you to what's called mad dog the missile, so fire it without any lock, and it will lock the first thing that comes into the cone of its radar. Dangerous, because it has no IFF, so it could just as easily attack a friendly as an enemy, uh, but you know, in an emergency situation you could do this. Um, bore sight mode also allows you to uh, Q using the helmet mounted sight, which would be quite an unusual use of the M120, but it is possible. Uh, next thing to note is that it confirms down here which pylons the missiles are present on. Pylons 1, 2, 8 and 9 have missiles. The one that's boxed is the one we'll launch next. If I tap nose wheel steering, I can change which missile I'm going to launch next. Uh, and then again, long press will allow me to switch between the two missile types. Now, let's jump across to our left MFD. And the setup here is going to be the same as in the previous video. So TMS right long is going to give us TWS. We're going to bump the range out to 80 nautical miles. And I'm going to reduce the bar scan. Actually, I'll make it two bars. And I'm going to reduce the azimuth here as well. So we're just scanning down the middle here. And there's a closer group. If I TMS left, we'll see the closer group is friendly, we get good IFF. This further away group, this four ship, does not. And so these guys are enemy. So let's mark these as system targets. There we go. And take us out of expand. And we are now ready to start engaging these targets. I'm going to bump my range down to the 40 nautical mile point. Master arm is already on. Okay, so now next... I'm going to go over the symbology that we have here on the HUD. And to do that, I'm going to pause just so we don't get too close to the enemy there. So new elements that we have uh, in air-to-air -air mode. Uh, the main one is this great big circle. This is specific to the AIM-120. That big circle is called the Allowable Steering Error Q, or the ASEC. Uh, basically, <laughs> it's the maximum angle at which we should launch the missile in reference to the target. So the target basically needs to be inside this circle in order to give it the best chance of hit. Uh, on the left hand side we have confirmation that master arm is on and then we have confirmation of our current missiles. We have four MRM, medium range missiles. That's what the, the system considers the AIM-120 to be. Uh, so I'm going to unpause and I'm going to press TMS right short and that will give us the first target. And again, I'm going to pause very quickly here. So again, new symbology that we have here, box. The box is the, the target. It's the target designator box. So that's the target supplied to us by the radar. Diamond inside the box is the missile seeker. So that confirms that our currently selected missile is pointed at this target, and that's the target it will engage. We have a small circle. Small circle is the ASC, or Attack Steering Q. That's where we should put the nose of our aircraft when we launch in order to give the missile the best chance to hit its target. Uh, and that small circle needs to be inside the big circle to give it the best chance. And again, the big circle is the allowable steering error Q. Right now, it's very small because the target is far away. As we get closer, this circle will grow uh, and there'll be a, a larger allowable steering error. Um, we now also have the DLZ, or Dynamic Launch Zone, displayed down the right-hand side of the HUD. The top of it here is at 40 miles. That's basically the current range of our radar. Uh, the caret is the current range to the target, so you can see we're a little bit below 40 miles, probably something like 35 miles at this time. Uh, 520 is the closure rate in knots. We're closing on this target at 520 knots. The top bar here is the maximum range of the missile, Keep in mind, though, that that's against a non-maneuvering target. So that's the absolute maximum range at which the missile could reach the target. If the target was to deploy any countermeasures or maneuver, it would miss. Uh, there are additional ranges that will show up once we're closer, and this DLZ expands. Uh, I'll go over them in a moment. The circle uh, is the, the range at which the missile will go active. So once the, once the missile gets to this point, it will turn on its own radar and it will be fully autonomous. Uh, and then we have confirmation of the range to target. F means the range is coming from the fire control radar, and current range to target is 34.7 miles. Let's continue inbound. So I'm going to point my aircraft towards this enemy, and I'm also going to bring 
the uh, tar- the sorry the attack steering queue inside the allowable steering uh, error queue. One last thing to note is that we also have a, di- uh, a, a triangle sorry on the circle. That's the the target's aspect. So if it's on the top, he's flying towards us. If it's on the bottom, he's flying away. You can see currently this target is flanking. He's flying right to left. Or actually, left to right, in fact. Okay, so we've got the circle in the circle. To achieve the best uh, range for the missile, you want to be flying as fast and as high as possible. I'm not going to climb right now because I don't want to mess around with the, the radar, uh, but I'm going to go afterburner just to give this missile a bit more range. We'll bring that speed up. And yeah, we've got circle in circle right now. And the range is counting down. So in a moment, uh, the the DLZ will expand and we'll get a better idea of the other ranges that it displays. Eighteen miles. If we wanted to do a longer range shot, we would have to climb. We'd want to be significantly above the target. Sixteen miles. DLZ has expanded a little. And we're approaching maximum range. Twelve miles. There we go. We're in maximum range. The allowable steering error circle is expanding. I'm going to pause just for one moment. Uh, you can see that actually at this, because we're co altitude, we don't get the additional bars. Normally there would be another bar here, and that would be uh, the maximum maneuvering range basically. So the range at which even if the enemy target employs fairly standard uh, evasive maneuvers we're likely to still hit them. Uh, we also now have an A counter. So there can be an A or a T counter here. A is time to autonomous if we were to launch now. T is time to impact. I'm going to launch the missile now by pressing and holding the weapons release button. Fox 3 and that's now Pitbull. That was only a few seconds of tracking by us. Missile is now Pitbull, which means it's tracking on its own, and we have a time to impact. Top counter is the time to impact if we launched another missile now. The bottom one is the time to impact for our currently launched missile. So five seconds, four, three, two, one, splash. That was an impact. That target is down. Okay, let's reset, and I'm going to show you the same thing again, but this time I'm going to bug all of the targets and launch against all of the targets, and I'll be at a higher altitude this time. Okay, and you rejoin us now. Uh, I'm attacking these four targets again. This time I have all four of them set as system targets, with the closest one bugged. Uh, I'm 10,000 feet above, and I'm full afterburner in order to maximize my engagement range. And actually, if I pause for one moment, you'll see that in this instance, the DLZ has expanded out and has additional ranges. So as before, we have maximum and minimum ranges, but we also have maximum maneuvering range on this uh, instance, because these aircraft are coming straight at us. I think the, the reason we didn't get that in the last one was because they were flanking, and so the system already considered that were, they were effectively maneuvering in relation to us. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire at maximum engagement range, because these are transport aircraft. They're not you know, realistically going to pull you know, maneuvers that are going to defeat our missile, but if I was 
uh, firing against another fighter, I would probably launch one missile at them near maximum and another missile inside maximum maneuvering to be guaranteed a kill. Uh, and then again, circle is when we will go active. So let's continue inbound and I'm going to demonstrate launching four missiles against four targets, as long as my radar doesn't lose lock, uh, which does happen sometimes with TWS. So that's us maximum range now, circle is expanding, we have time till active. Uh, I'm going to start firing as soon as the little circle is in the big circle, actually. Uh, so we're going to go Fox 3, TMS right, Fox 3, TMS right, Fox 3, TMS right, Fox 3, and all of our missiles are away. Okay, and we're the last one will go pit bull when this uh, timer runs out. If we look at the uh, F10 view, we can see all four of our missiles appear to be tracking nicely. Let's follow one of these and see what it does. Oh yes, big juicy target right there, head on. That's one down. Two. Three. Yeah, all down. So that's four splashes, and our circle is flashing now because uh, we've actually lost those tracks. Look at all of that. What a mess. Okay, so I'm going to reset, and then last I will demonstrate radar queuing of the Sidewinder. Okay, so you join me back in the cockpit again. Uh, this time I'm just flying at the same altitude as our target because we're not really looking to, to push the range of this missile too far. It's a pretty short range missile. Um, we have confirmed on the HUD here two times HOB, which is high off bore sight. Uh, that's what the system calls the AIM 9 xes on the HUD. Uh, earlier versions of the Sidewinder will appear as SRM, or short range missile. Uh, we're closing at a high rate of knots. We're 18 miles out. I'm going to go to my stores management page and I'm going to enable the cooling for the sidewinders and that means the uh, the seeker will be at its highest effectiveness. And let's continue inbound. This is an STT by the way. Uh, I've not bothered bugging on this occasion because we can only launch against a single target at a time using the sidewinder anyway. Uh, but it would be possible to do a bugged target attack. So we're approaching maximum range. We're in maximum range. The seeker is looking towards the target, but I don't have tone yet. I'm going to wait and get tone before I launch. And I fired. He's deploying flares. And I think he actually managed to evade that. Um, I think I probably enabled the cooling of my missile too late. Uh, and so it wasn't totally effective at that point. But that is the method that you would employ in any case. I'm going to come back around and see if I can actually get a cheeky shot off there. Uh, without using the radar perhaps on this occasion. There's somebody. So I'm just going to put the diamond, which is the seeker, over him. Press uncage and fire because I'm a bad sport and I want to make a kill. <laughs> there we go. So actually, that was demonstrating with radar queuing and without. Um, it is possible just to use the, the seeker on the missile. Put the diamond on the target, listen to the tone, hit on cage, press fire. Okay, so that is a demonstration of air-to-air -air missiles with radar queuing in the F-16. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's such a big help, and your support means a lot to me, and I'll see you all next time.